Hey everybody, today I want to make a video on the topic of desperation. Why would I make a video on the topic of desperation? Because I feel that a lot of people don't identify this as something that the Lord values. Something that the Lord tries to create. Let's take a deeper look into what I mean. In a wonderful talk, Drawing the Power of Jesus Christ into Our Lives, Russell M. Nelson, when he was president of the Twelve Apostles, if I'm not mistaken, he stated in that wonderful talk, When you reach up for the Lord's power in your life with the same intensity that a drowning person has when grasping and gasping for air, power from Jesus Christ will be yours. When the Savior knows you truly want to reach up to Him, when He can feel that the greatest desire of your heart is to draw His power into your life, you will be led by the Holy Ghost to know exactly what you should do. In other words, how better to describe a drowning person than desperate? They desperately need a solution because their life depends on it. Therefore, they desperately do all they can. They desperately desire. That desperation brings forth desire. And what happens when they have that desperate desire? When they believe that it's their end, if they don't receive aid in that situation? Well, when we do the same thing in our spiritual life, if we desperately reach for Christ then the Holy Ghost will be our guide and we will know exactly what to do, says our now prophet. If we look at time and time again, desperation was what drove those who needed and wanted to be healed by Christ to be healed by Christ. Their faith made them whole and part of that faith seemed to be desperation they were desperate here's one example luke 18 verses 38 through 43 and he cried saying jesus thou son of david have mercy on me and they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace but he cried so much the more thou son of david have mercy on me and jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him and when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. His desperation his desperate cries, Thou son of David, have mercy on me, yielded the fruit of him being healed. Desperation plays a bigger role than maybe we think, and maybe some of us aren't desperate enough. We see the same principle with Alma as he recounts his experience of repentance to his son. In Alma 36, 15-20, O oh, thought I, that I could be banished and become extinct both soul and body, that I might not be brought to stand in the presence of my God, to be judged of my deeds. And now for three days and for three nights was I racked, even with the pains of a damned soul. And it came to pass that as I was thus racked with torment, while I was harrowed up by the memory of my many sins, Behold, I remembered also to have heard my father prophesy unto the people concerning the coming of one, Jesus Christ, a son of God, to atone for the sins of the world. And now as my mind caught hold upon this thought, I cried within my heart, O Jesus, thou son of God, have mercy on me, whom am in the gall of bitterness and am encircled about by the everlasting chains of death. And now, behold, when I thought this, 
I could remember my pains no more. Yea, I was harrowed up by the memory of my sins no more. And oh, what joy, and what marvelous light I did behold. Yea, my soul was filled with joy, as exceeding as was my pain. We see that Alma's desperation, Alma's crying out, much the same way that the blind man who wanted to be healed called out to Christ. He calls out to Christ and then he receives deliverance. Only does he receive, he only receives deliverance after he is desperate. And God put him in a position to be desperate by sending the angel and by having him to be kind of knocked out for three days and three nights. In First Nephi chapter 8, during Lehi's dream vision, he describes an interesting situation where he follows a man, but quickly becomes lost. And it's interesting what he does when he becomes lost. He says, And it came to pass that I saw a man, and he was dressed in a white robe, and he came and stood before me. And it came to pass that he spake unto me and bade me follow him. And it came to pass that as I followed him I beheld myself that I was in a dark and dreary waste. And after I had traveled for the space of many hours in darkness, I began to pray unto the Lord that he would have mercy on me according to the multitude of his tender mercies. And it came to pass that after I had prayed unto the Lord, I beheld a large and spacious field. So he is bidden to follow a man, this man. This man bids him to follow him. A man dressed, dressed in a white robe. A peculiar thing. Very interesting. It doesn't say an angel dressed in a white robe. It says a man dressed in a white robe. That Lehi follows him but quickly becomes lost following him. Maybe this alludes to that we need to not follow men or the teachings of men, but learn from Christ, follow the prophet who is the key holder and servant of God and called by God to lead. But following the prophet isn't even enough. That's the basic level to follow the prophet. The next level is while following the prophet, receive additional revelation for yourself in your situation which the prophet will not give you because he's going to give you the broad information that's for the whole church not your specific situation in in, in most circumstances but it's so important to follow the prophet and to take that as priority but he finds himself lost in darkness and it's only when he cries out have mercy on me in desperation that he's delivered and he immediately sees a large and spacious field. In Helaman we read about our condition and why desperation is required and why the Lord puts us in positions to generate desperation so that we might receive like these others did healing or forgiveness or guidance and thus we see that except the Lord doth chasten his people with many afflictions yea except he doth visit them with death and with terror and with famine and with all manner of pestilence they will not remember him oh how foolish oh how vain oh how evil and devilish and how quick to do iniquity and how slow to do good are the children of men Yea, how quick to hearken unto the words of the evil one, and to set their hearts upon the vain things of the world. Yea, how quick to be lifted up in pride. Yea, how quick to boast and to do all manner of that which is iniquity. And how slow are they to remember the Lord their God, and to give an ear unto his counsels. Yea, and how slow to walk in wisdom's paths. Behold, they do not desire that the Lord their God who hath created them should rule and reign over them notwithstanding his great goodness and his mercy towards them they do set it not his counsels 
and they will not that he should be their guide. This is something worth pondering. We should ask ourselves, do we fall into this category? And the answer is probably yes, all of us do. All of us are hopelessly lost without Christ. And unless we know that we're hopelessly lost, we will never have the desperation required to receive a miracle like the, the man did with the healing from being blind or Alma did with the forgiveness that was so sweet, as sweet as it was bitter before. Many miracles, those come when we're at our moment of defeat and we cry out to the Lord for help, putting all of our trust in Him and remembering Him and how much better it is to seek after Him while in good times, to seek after Him desperately. We don't need bad times to be desperate. We just need reality to set in, to know that we already desperately need Him In 3 Nephi 19.24, we read, And it came to pass that when Jesus had thus prayed unto the Father, he came unto his disciples, and behold, they did still continue without ceasing to pray unto him, and they did not multiply many words, for it was given unto them what they should pray, and they were filled with desire. Desperation fills with desire. I pray that we will be desperate for the Lord, desperate for his revelations to be given to us, desperate to follow the prophet and do those things which those who hold keys have invited us to do, and that we will be desperate to keep every one of his commandments, desperate to learn his will, desperate to read his holy words, desperate to know the fruits of the Spirit desperate to obtain the gifts of the Spirit, desperate, desperate to receive the words of Christ as we pray. This is my prayer, and I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.